Hey guys, it's Amalia, and this week I have decided to go zero waste with a few of my friends here in seminary during our lockdown. Hope you enjoy. Okay guys, so it is now morning on Sunday, and I am officially going to start my zero waste challenge. My roommate is still asleep, so forgive my whisper. Basically, the first thing that's out of my ordinary routine um, is going to be making my tea. Um, so one, I'm just going to clarify, yes, this clock has plastic on it, but, um, if from all the zero waste YouTubers I've watched, they really encouraged, if you have a product already, don't just buy a new product, even if the product you originally bought is not good for the environment, um, use it as long as it lasts, because that's more in the spirit of, um, like, not wasting, um, and the same is going to be true, I forgot to mention, for things like deodorant, toothpaste, etc., um, Let's finish them up before we, um, before we try to figure out a zero waste equivalent. Okay, so today I happen to be running late, um, and usually when I'm running late, I'll grab a tea bag instead of my nifty little tea strainer. But today, um, because I'm, um, because I'm doing the zero waste thing, I'm just gonna have to wash out my tea strainer. Yes, I know I should have washed it out when I used it. Ew. Um, but it was only last night, so. Um, so here's a fine example of a mistake I've made to your waste wise. This is my jar of um, tea and it is a plastic jar. Um, but like I said, like we're going to finish up products before we try to come up with better solutions for them. Okay, one particular challenge of today regarding zero waste living, um, during, especially during the time of Corona, is the fact that I have not yet found a mask um, that's reusable, that I find breathable, um, as breathable as disposable masks. We'll do it for today, um, but it's going to be a bit rough. Um, so just another tonight um, for this zero waste day. We decided that we really don't think it's plausible for us to um, not use toilet, like not use disposable toilet paper um, for this week, nor um, to not use tissues. Um, so we are going to, regarding like hand towels and stuff like that, we are going to use like a real towel, um, not a disposable one, but however for toilet paper, as well as for, um, tissues, um, we think that that makes, um, the most sense for us where we're at now, um, on this zero waste journey. So right now I am going to put my, um, um, my toward learning booklet from last week, they like are essentially newspapers, um, into the Geniza, um, or into, like, the Seamus pile, um, where you have to put booklets that have, like, holy names of God, um, and something I just realized that's really fascinating, um, is that perhaps the Geniza system, where we essentially ritually bury, um, any, like, holy works, um, is actually fairly, um, environmentally friendly, um, I know because I was, like, thinking about it, I was concerned to be, um, burying that um but aside from the staples um all uh, like any papers in there um really do decompose um and you're putting them into the ground um and um i just feel a little bit better about that system i never like thought about it as such an issue anyway um to be honest but um now i realize that um it's honestly um not particularly wreaking like any havoc on earth which is really nice so, um, as intended with this journey, um, this week, it's definitely getting me to think, like, I'm looking at, like, all the, like, these are long-term use plastics, um, that I just use in my daily life, um, even, like, I was looking at the, um, the squeegee for the sink, things like this, um, that I would probably use for a few years, but, um, eventually get rid of, um, and it just seems, um, like, it's a compelling thing for me to look at, um, to see what conscious decisions I want to make in terms of what products to buy. Um, I don't know how I feel about, um, like, long-term use plastics. I do think it's an important thing to actually think about as a conscious decision, so I'm really grateful to be doing that now. This is Leora, who I'm going on the zero hey. waste journey with. Um, and we are, in terms of food waste, I didn't address this, but we are actually going to start composting. So Leora is starting our brown compost. <laughs> okay, so my first major piece of unintentional waste of the day, this is the bag that my last few of those publications that I just put in 
finishing this. Um, it came in like four come at a time, but I'm on the last one that was in this package, so I didn't think I'm considering this um, part of my waist for the week. Um, and I'm going to try as much as possible to reuse it. Maybe I'll use this as my actual like waist holder um, for the week. All the things that I've like accumulated um, in terms of actual waste. Um, but we're gonna try to find a function for it, and then if not, we'll hopefully try to dispose of it properly. Okay, so we're heading out to go on a little bit of like a walk fuel thing. And I think there might be food that um, is being given out. Um, and I just didn't have such a plan. I don't have like a set or anything of zero waste stuff, but I'm bringing a container as well as a fork um, so that I can eat it. So I just got back from the fuel and I just wanted to share that um, the more like anytime I would do something, like I used my um, container to drink um, tea that we were making like on the fire um, Anytime I did something like that people just had questions and were curious and like asked and I told them um, And people really wanted to get involved. Um, people asked if they could like join um, Leora and me this week in becoming zero waste and um, And even like we told them about composting so many people gave me tips on composting people gave me things to compost um, and it's just like really nice to see how people if you just like open up the option really do want to help um make our environment and planet better so something annoying um about doing this in seminary i have a bowl but i lost my meat spoon so i had to go all the way to the kitchen to get a spoon after i'd already filled up my bowl forgetting that i didn't have a spoon um so i took a spoon from the kitchen but um it was just a bit of a trek throughout the building but i guess it's worth it for at least for a week like these are the type of things like i wonder on a general day would i take the effort i don't know um but i do want to become more conscious of it and like maybe it will also make it a little more typical for me to um just go get a spoon and once it's part of my routine it's a little less annoying so this tip is only for people who are ridiculous like me but there was soup today and there's chicken um, and I didn't want to have to wash a, like a bowl and a plate because that takes time, um, especially if it was just for one piece of chicken. So I put the chicken in my soup. Um, other people will probably judge me for this. I also didn't want to watch, uh, wash a fork and knife. So we're going to eat the chicken with said spoon, um, but it should work. Okay, right now I am waiting for my tea to boil in the kitchen. Um, and I just thought I'd take a minute to explain what's going to be happening later today. Um, that's going to be a very interesting challenge, essentially. Um, they decided um, because we are stuck here for so long, um, we asked for a trip to the supermarket um, and they're like closing the supermarket so we can come um, and um, like shop after hours, like sorry, after they close, we are coming um, and shopping, which is great. Um, but um, it should be a challenge because um, I don't have many supermarket options. Um, and it's going to be a typical supermarket um, and trying to find um, products that I'm going to need for like longer term um, to leave here um, are definitely going to be a bit challenging. I think I'm going to try to do minimal waste. I think this might be a bit of a pitfall um, in terms of my zero waste um, projects this week um, simply because I don't think there will be even be like trying to think in terms of like a butcher counter that um, I could, if I want meat, that I could get meat with um, just asking to put it in a container as opposed to um, like, um, as opposed to just buying plastic wrapped. I really don't think that would be an option. So um, we're going to try to play around, um, see what we can do, but um, part of it's out of like necessity. Um, and I think that's like a key thing for me in zero waste. like. Um, I really would ideally, obviously, I don't think anyone wants to make more waste than they have to. Um, but sometimes on a practical level, um, it becomes hard to make the conscious, like make um, the best decisions for the environment when you also have to make decisions um, on a practical level for yourself. So we're going to go on that journey and see what we can do. Okay, so I am now back from grocery shopping and I figured I will go through my haul with you guys um, and discuss how I made these purchases. It was really hard um, and you won't believe it because that I, like that I took time with it because honestly, it's still a lot of plastic, a lot of waste. Um, I really tried my best. Um, I will say like I just needed um, 
like I needed food um, and I couldn't like just put that off um, because I don't know the next time I'll be able to go shopping um, because we're in a seger, so like a lockdown. So um, I'll show you what I bought um, and explain the purchasing thought behind it. So for ground meat, um, I would say this is probably the most challenging thing to find anything remotely um, environmentally friendly. This is clearly not environmentally friendly. It's styrofoam packing. Um, it's wrapped in like two layers of plastic. Um, I honestly can't justify this purchase um, on that level. Um, like um, I, um, and like I just really needed it um, in terms of making food. I very rarely have meat. Um, and it was like, I have very rarely go to places that have meat and, um, that's what I had to do. Um, this is some chicken, um, that I, again, also needed. And this is the packing it came in. There also wasn't a butcher on site because it, um, was later at night. And so I couldn't ask him to chop stuff and put it in a container for me or anything like that. Um, so moving on to yogurt, this was something so frustrating to see, um, as I was shopping that they did not sell a large pack of yogurt, nor did they sell any options um, that weren't plastic packaging. Um, this is even more frustrating to me that in order to buy this, I had to buy it um, in a box. Like I have to buy both plastic and cardboard. Um, and I just found that like very um, frustrating because even in the States, like um, in my family where we're not that environmentally conscious, we're able to buy um, like a large pack of yogurt um, and they just didn't have that option here um and that was like annoying um so next um there were a few options of nuts to buy um i chose these because all of the options were in plastic and there weren't any like take your um take for yourself options but these containers were the most likely that i would use again so i tried making a conscious decision in what type of container i would use because i'll reuse it um at least like for the remainder of the year um and like I like I genuinely would um, reuse it as opposed to like a plastic bag that I'd get less use out of. So I think that's a smarter purchase and they were relatively equivalent pricing. This is something very bothersome. I need to bake um, like I needed this for baking. Um, and yet um, they literally sell it in a box in a contain in a plastic container. Um, and it's just like, why? Um, and, um, but I needed it because I had ran, run out of vanilla, um, and it was important, um, for all my, like, baking needs and stuff, um, and I didn't, like, I even looked to try to see if they had vanilla bean I could buy, um, and instead of using vanilla extract, and, um, oh, I just realized this is vanilla flavor, not even vanilla extract, that's disgusting, but I guess that's what we bought. Okay. So tuna, there was an option of either tuna in a, in bags. Um, they have that here where you can like buy tuna in a package and like put whatever you want into it or tuna in can. I bought, chose the tuna in can. Um, I think this isn't like the worst purchase aside from the labeling. Um, but I did like try to be conscious of that um, and not buy the quicker option, which also comes in portions that are sometimes more convenient to carry. Yes. So this is probably my most like lazy purchase um, that I really shouldn't justify because I really could buy, um, I really could just buy um, garlic and chop it myself. Um, however, I do use this like on a daily basis for most things I cook. Um, now that I'm looking at it, I didn't even think of it in the store, but it's something I very well and very easily could just switch out with chopping my own garlic more frequently. Um, and so I'm a little ashamed of this purchase and I'm going to think about it and maybe not buy it again. Um, this is some cheese I bought because me and my roommate are having a pizza night. Um, and I just felt like even though it um, comes in a bag, there weren't other options. Um, there wasn't even like a block of cheese that had less, um, that had less that I could grate. Um, and it was like, um, for a, like event with my roommate and I didn't have a, um, a better solution. Um, so we had to go with that. Um, so something I am kind of happy I was able to do, um, I bought, when I bought fruits, I just put them, like I carried them in my, um, in my reusable grocery bags and then just, I only needed a few. So I just put them onto the, um, conveyor belt without a bag. 
um, without like one of the plastic supermarket bags on them. Um, and they were fine with that. Um, one of the things I'm really frustrated by is like when apples just need to have um, a sticker or something like that. The pears didn't have anything, which was great. But even finding apples, um, which you didn't need a bag, didn't need anything, which was like a good option for produce that I otherwise might have brought frozen, like they're still um, plastic. Um, next, I bought a bottle of oil. Um, I don't feel like this is it is um, it's a glass bottle, which is a a bit better even though I probably won't use the bottle again because of the spout um but um it's again like a communal purchase that we usually have in our room um and it was just important to get because we don't have oil right now um and there wasn't another option like all of these things like if I was living in my daily life like as an adult perhaps I'd consider even making my own olive oil um like doing like interesting things like that which I enjoy anyway but um that just wasn't practical here um i think this is my second purchase that's genuinely lazy and i'm a little ashamed of there wasn't any mango um not frozen so i had to buy frozen mango chopped which one is a lot of processing and two um and two comes in wrapped in plastic but um i really like again i needed this for yogurt for um, most of the food i eat here um, and like, um, I chose the best option I could see cause they did not have regular mango. Um, finally, um, when it came to my buying of peanut butter, um, this is like a challenge because one, I like, um, I like natural peanut butters and shockingly, usually natural peanut butters in the U S you can find it in, um, your own jars. Or you can even sometimes find machines that like give you natural peanut butter. Um, here, this was like the, this was actually a good mixed solution because the other, all the other peanut butters had sugar in them. And also all the other peanut butters were, um, were in jars. I probably want to not use again. This is still a plastic jar. However, like I said, um, it's something I would use. Um, I would definitely use again, um, which made me feel a little bit better about the purchase because I know I would use it, um, and could find use for it. Um, anyway, so that's my haul. I definitely did not succeed in at all a zero waste trip. Every single product I bought, except maybe my pears has some element of plastic. Um, and, um, although like we really do try with these things, um, like we can make conscious decisions about what things we'd use more and what products are overall better, but, um, cost factors in and, um, cost factors in, um, like what's available in your area factors in I'm feeling that a lot during a lockdown um and yeah I definitely I something I am happy about is I noticed a lot of girls having to use like regular shopping bags because they just didn't take the foresight to bring a reusable bag um and I think that's something that's a very easy small switch um someone can make in their lives and the truth is that these bags are not environmentally friendly but I got them at a different shopping trip um when um, I wasn't as conscious of it and, um, there's no reason to not use them. Um, and they still are at least saving, um, like on unnecessary plastic, um, that otherwise would be produced. So I'm happy with them. Okay. So it's day two of my zero waste journey after my fails from last night and I'm going to eat. So now I'm going to go grab lunch with my bowl and stolen spoon. Um, and we're going to see how that goes. Okay, so I just finished my lunch and I decided any bones I'm throwing out um, because I couldn't find a solution for what to do with them because I really gnaw on my bones. So otherwise I'd make like bone broth or something and like at least um, have another step with them. Um, but it just really didn't make sense because I like chew so much of the meat out of them that I honestly get a lot of functional use. But what I did save is my um, orange peels. Um, because I'm not going to compost them, but I have to come up with another solution. Um, and I think I'm going to maybe try to figure out how to either make, um, I don't know, like some type of scented something. We'll see. Okay, so for tonight's dinner, we are having some very, um, funky looking cucumber, a tomato, and, um, leftover fish from Shabbos, um, that I'm actually having missing up because most people don't eat fish here and there's like two trays worth of fish. So I'm happy to eat it. Um, and this is pretty easy to make. Nothing had labels. 
um, even their stichina on top um, that was from like a large bulk container that I'm pretty sure they reused. Um, so all in all, I think this was a pretty easy meal. So now it's Seder Arab and I'm about to head out, but I wanted a small snack. So I'm just going to take some nuts and put them in my um, reusable glass cup. So something I've noticed I've started doing since um, the zero waste journey, I'm walking to lunch now, is carrying um, a backpack. Um, why? Because I think like, I randomly think of like, oh, maybe I'll need a fork or maybe I'll need this. And so it just kind of throws it into a backpack, even though I'm like fairly close to my room. Um, but so I have like a fork, I carry a dish towel um, and random things that can help me with more zero waste. Hello. So remember when I said I was going to do something with my orange peel in order to reuse it? Because technically it's compostable, but it's not the best thing to put in your compost. So I was trying to think what I could do with it. And then I remembered something I used to do when I was on this summer program where I'd forgotten to bring my tea with me. Um, and I used to just wash off the orange peels and make orange tea and it was delicious. I loved it. So we're just going to do that. I used to also do it with grapefruit peels, other peels, and I really should start doing it again. So now I'm, you could literally just put it in like this, but I'm going to put it into my tea strainer. Um, because I don't know, I washed, I obviously washed this and I washed it well, but I still kind of think orange peels are a little, um, gross. And you just put in some peel. Um, I can, you can like use the whole thing or part of it. Um, I might save this. Um, and yeah, that is how we make it. Hey guys, so today is actually to be shot. Um, and they got us like ingredients to prepare for um, to be shot. And we're just going to try to cook as zero waste as possible. Obviously like we can't control like what ingredients they buy. But um, just being conscious of the amount of waste we make, I brought my dish towel with me so that we can um, use that to wipe our hands and things like that. Whereas in most times when we cook, we usually um, use paper towels. So I think that would be beneficial and also trying to not use any plastic utensils, which I also sometimes do when I cook here. So usually when we, um, when we cook here, we don't have any measuring cups. So we just use these coffee cups. Um, and we were like, oh wait, we're being zero waste this week. What should we use? Um, and so we just switched to another non-measuring cup. <laughs> but um, I think now, from now on, this is a pretty easy solution. Yep. We just measure it out where it goes to in the cup. So um, we're making um, sweet potatoes to go into our salad. And in order to do that, um, we needed a tray. So we're using, and we don't have any dairy um, foil, like non-foil pans. We only have meat ones here. So um, I'm moving all of these brekas into um, a reusable carton. Okay, so fun story. So we took out the brekas, but the pan's kind of like gross on the bottom from the brekas. So we actually have to use a uh, sheet of parchment paper, which is whatever, but because we're doing our best with minimal waste with this meal, but what can you do? Okay, so basically as we've been doing this project, um, we have been collecting all of our garbage to see um, what waste we generate. Um, even preparing for a holiday that has <laughs> become known as a bit of an Arbor Day here. <laughs> so let's take a look. Okay, let's analyze. So we have two metal cans. Um, this one has like paper also. Um, so that's like two pieces of garbage. Now the part is to analyze what we could potentially oh, do with amazing. this. <laughs> Now the part is to analyze what we could potentially do with said garbage. Mm. Um. If we wanted to, we could plant in it. That's always an option. But I don't really want to plant. I mean, you, cans you can always, like if you wash out, you can use as like pencil holders, things like that. <laughs> project? Yeah. <laughs> Chocolate wrapper. There's also tin foil. Oh, they're hard to reuse. Um, oh, I have one. Give me your finger. Hooray, <laughs> uh, Lee. I really don't think this is worth the fruit on. It better not be. <laughs> I'm really awkward. Um, okay. 
So I guess this we have to throw out. It's really unfortunate because part of the problem with this process is that we don't have recycling here. Yeah. Very okay. We have three plastic fully packages. And they, um, can't and they can't be recycled and they're impossible to reuse. That's really frustrating. Is there any way to reuse them? Cover your barley with it. Lisa says your barley cover. <laughs> no, like <laughs> <laughs> what? That's gross? No, it's just like uh, this one's sweet. Like no. Like, you needed something to cover the top of it with. Uh-huh. One time reuse, but ideally these are not the best things to buy. Otherwise, you need other plastic. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thanks. Um, this we used to hold our compost while we were. Um, you could use this for an art project. Yeah, definitely. This is probably useful for sure. As you what? Can store things in it. Like just as like a little container. You and it's recyclable, so if we had recycling. If we theoretically <laughs> had recycling, we could recycle this. This is the cover of a Skippy peanut butter, which, yeah, I don't know what to do with it. There's like that layer and that layer. Okay. Then we have this plastic bin. This we could use for something. Yeah, you could plant something in it. Do we have any functional use for it now? A measuring bowl. <laughs> right, the measuring yeah. on the side. I mean, in theory, we would have to. Oh, we could use it. it. We could make a mini cake. That's actually well, it's plastic. <laughs> <laughs> Can't <laughs> bet in it. Let's try. I I mean, trying to be creative here. Um. But notice how all of the trash we use is just from the food products. We did a really good job with like baking with only yeah i'm really happy because think about other times when we've cooked right like usually there's like a mound of cups also that we can right. use right just like never cups and spoons and like paper mm -hmm. towels and, and now we've used like a towel and like I'm, I'm proud of us honestly um it's just frustrating how much waste like you can't help making oh we also use this glass bottle but glass bottles you really need to reuse okay mm -hmm. Okay, right, so it's actually very exciting. We're allowed to leave for a shot at uh, Shabbat, but um, I'm actually gonna go visit my fiance who's in Bidud, and I really wanted to make sure I'm being fully safe. Um, so I wanted to wear an N95, and in order to do that, I had to open up the individualized plastic wrap with extra like plastic paper inside, um, but I didn't really have another option because um, we need to stay fully safe sometimes. Okay, so just giving a rundown on the wet rest of my weekend um, where I didn't really film the party because I was very embarrassed. I really did try um, to be as conscious as possible. However, um, one, when you're staying at other people's houses, um, you end up generating garbage because like it's based on what food they have, or what they're, what you're being served, etc. Um, and two, I noticed like the more I took public transportation, the more places I went. Um, and like the less stuff I could carry with me because I was like had everything on my back. Um, I like generated so many receipts um, and which was really unfortunate. A lot of like buses in Israel, like you don't, they don't have an option of not taking the receipts, the receipts printed anyway. Um, and yeah, it was just like kind of eye opening to see how hard it was to travel um, while generating zero waste, even something as simple as like taking a bus. Um, okay, so mission partially completed. Maybe I went zero waste for a week, minimal waste, a little bit more than minimal waste. Um, I really did try though, um, and that's my goal of what I want to try to um, do in my general life. Um, just be more conscious of the waste I'm making and figure out when there is room for a better solution um, to use it. And finally, I think for my adult life, um, that's hopefully coming pretty soon because you know it's a sham I'm getting married and um, like when I'm registering for things for my wedding like taking into account reusable thing uh, how like how I want things to have like last for a long time and I want them to um, be products that eventually when I do need to 
get rid of them that like they won't be causing as much harm to the environment i wanted to finish with just thoughts um on zero waste in judaism so i definitely i was had a very interesting conversation with a friend of mine um over the week when we uh, we were being zero waste about how as a religious jew like personally i was saying like i don't want this to become my religion um per se um and to be like the main thing i value because I have so many rules and restrictions and things I already value. Um, rather, I think there is value to saying on a broad level that the planet's important. Um, and say, like, and also, um, I haven't heard any like halachic source talk about this, but in my personal life, I think it might be Amida, uh, like um, Amida is like an attribute um, of, there's, um, an is, uh, like, there's an Isra in Judaism called Baal Tashri, um, or Baal Tashris, it's to deliver specifically it's um like the specific mitzvah is regarded like fruit trees as we came into israel and like not cutting them down um but the broader commandment um people use it to refer to food waste um to refer to just wasting products that you don't need to waste um and i think it could be really valuable to um like view this like as another yet another resource we don't need to waste um and something like if if it ain't broke like use it. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope this was an interesting video. Bye!